Loveline is meant for an adult audience. Loveline may contain sexually oriented content. Listener discretion is advised. Now, here's Loveline with Dr. Drew and Adam Carolla. This is Loveline. Let me get the phone number out. I'm talking to the world's largest microphone. That is huge, isn't it? It is tremendous. It must make my it must my mouth must pale in comparison. Uh, uh, yes. I feel like Bernadette Peters giving a blowjob. It's really visual, folks. She she has a very small I, mouth. I, I got it. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you and mahalo. One eight hundred L O V E one nine one one eight hundred five six eight thirty one ninety one. The fax number three one zero eight five four. Forty-four fifty-five. We have a marquee show planned for tonight. This is a big one, Drew. We have the folks from Party of Five. We have Nev Campbell and Michael Gorgian. He plays her boyfriend. Right. So I may have to stock him as I well. Say, I think. Yeah, I thought you said you were. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to look at my stalker's handbook out in the van. But I'm thinking I may have to stock the two of them. Uh, Party of Five is is uh, on Fox. It's on, uh, I believe it's, oh, well, I'm not going to screw it up. I'm going to get all the information before I give out times and dates. But I do like this show. Yeah, I, we, we've been fans for for a long time. In fact, Nev and uh, her male counterpart, the other male lead, uh, uh, were both up here. What's his name? Scott Wolf. That's right. They were both up here right when the show was premiering. Right. And this show had sort of a Cagney and Lacey type thing going for it, which is it started off, everyone agreed it was a good show, but right. I don't think the ratings were that great, and people got behind it, and it just kind of goes to show you if something's good, it'll it'll last, it'll hang around. Yeah. What I'm doing here on my fifth month, I don't know. Drew, you want to go to the phones? Yeah, let's go. All here, right. Here's your list. Oh, here's my list. Drew writes yeah. down the calls he wants. Here we go. Keisha. Uh, good evening. How are you, Adam? Hi, Keisha. Is Dr. Drew there? I am here. What's up? Hi, Dr. Drew. Keisha? Um, well, I had a couple things. First for Dr. Drew. Dr. Yeah. Drew, um, yeah. I read somewhere that if your penis doesn't have an erection, um, the tissue will die. If it if doesn't? have regular erections, there's not enough blood flow? Yeah, it'll atrophy and fall off, won't it, Jock? I'm not aware of that. What, have they done any studies with people who are uh, paralyzed? I mean, I don't know. I just got this of people who are paralyzed still have erections. I mean, because a, a lot of the erectile function is dependent not on your brain, but on what goes on in the spinal cord. No kidding. Yeah. That's why I used to get them at gym class. <laughs> well, I got this out of Playboy. They, someone did some research, and that's why men have uh, nocturnal erections. Yeah, I don't know. I've never heard of anything. No, I'll like tell that. you why they have nocturnal <laughs> erections. <laughs> because they're picturing their sister's best friends crewing a pirate ship. That's why they have nocturnal erections. Oh, okay. Okay? Uh, yeah. um, I called to share something with you guys. Um, a couple years ago, I wanted to blow my girlfriend's mind. So um, I, I'm pretty tall and thin and uh, pretty limber. And uh, during sex, I had her put her back up against the headboard of the bed and I slid my legs underneath hers and by grabbing my feet I could extend my legs forward and uh, perform oral sex on her while still having sexual intercourse. Uh, wow. Definitely blew her mind. You pulled the Ichabod crane maneuver. Oh man. Oh that's a 9-7 on the difficulty scale. <laughs> it's a lot of work, but, I mean she just went absolutely through the roof. You know, you know, Keisha, this brings me to a point. Mm. We don't need you for this point, so I'm going to get rid of you. But Thank here's you. what I'm, I'm sure it didn't feel that great to the woman. I mean, it probably felt good. But, you know, whenever you get into these really weird positions, it's, there's always a little distraction. Because your boyfriend is, is shaped like a pretzel is, is just one of the many distractions that's going on. But you know what turned her on the most about this, Drew? No. Effort. He was making an effort. And let me give this little piece of advice now to is, guys out is, now there. Now, is this some kind of preamble to uh, advice for Valentine's Day for tomorrow? It certainly is, So just, just go out of your way. Is that all you're saying you have to do to be a good boyfriend? They want to see effort. The right. difference between men and women when it comes to gift giving yes. and gift receiving is effort. Meaning women like picnics. Why do women love picnics so much? Because it's a tremendous pain in the ass for the guy. Right. Right. Because women don't. Here's, here's what picnics are. Ants? No. Women don't. Deli food? No. They don't right. like that. And sitting on wet sod. They don't enjoy that. Right. But they love the tremendous effort right. put forth by the male. Right. Whereas men are, are 180 degrees. The bottom line is the gift. 
What they get is if your woman went next door and handed you a belt sander that she ripped off from the neighbor's garage and said, here, I didn't have time to wrap it because he was chasing me with a sprinkler key, you'd go, fantastic. Uh, this is wonderful. Yeah. Go over there and rip off some sanding belts. You know what I'm saying? But the women's expectation of men is pretty low. Right. I mean, they don't expect you to do too much. Like, let me tell you, I, I made dinner reservation for tomorrow night at a special place for my wife for Valentine's Day. And she act, it was supposed to be a surprise, but she found out about it. And she goes, oh, dinner reservations. Very creative. Oh, see? But, but I mean, I just made dinner reservations. But it wasn't like I went way out of my yeah, way. But you, kind of creative input did that take? But a woman would, ra she could have four bald tires on her car. Four Four tires with the belt hanging off of them, and she would rather have you take a Campbell's soup can and glue some elbow macaroni to it and, sp and spray paint it gold than have her get four new tires. That's how practical women are. They like the effort. I see. Okay. They want the custom effort. Right, right. Not just you picking up the phone or yelling at your secretary or one of your many lackeys around the office, Drew, and having to make a romantic uh, uh, date for you and your wife at a restaurant. Right. They want effort. Keith. Yeah, how you guys doing? Good. I had a question. I guess the doctor drew anyway. Yeah, Keith. This is about beer bongs. Yeah. Um, I had constructed maybe three or four beer bongs over the past month. Constructed. And <laughs> me and my brother share the same room. We have about Sounds like like they has to set up some kind of a barracks and he, construct. Right, he's them. like an alcoholic MacGyver. This guy. Well, I'm just trying to use it anyway. My girlfriend came over about a few weeks ago, and she's you know she's always bitching about him, complaining, and saying you know this and that. Well, she comes to me with a story telling me that some guy actually died from doing a beer bong because I think his liver exploded or no. something like that. No, well, I, I read that story. All right, well, you, livers don't explode, not right, unless see, they're, I'm like, shot with a gun. Because the biggest cylinder we have is, like, a 32, you know, a quart. So all I'm right. thinking, however, I, I tell you what happened in that story is dad caught him and kicked his ass. And then his liver exploded. He kicked him in the liver. He kicked him in the rupture. liver. Is that, I'm just wondering, is that possible? Well, Keith, here's what can happen. Okay. Uh, you can sort of go down the wrong pipe, so to speak, and pour that right into your lungs. Right. And that's a mess, and it causes pneumonia, and you can die of that. Right. Uh, or you can deliver such a high dose of alcohol to your system so quickly that you can actually induce an alcohol overdose, go into coma, and then die. Right. So, yeah, that, those two ways you can get into trouble. It certainly is not the healthiest of habits, is it? I mean, is there, like, a bigger difference between just drinking, like, out of the can as opposed to... Yeah, there is. A, there is clearly a greater intoxicating and sedating effect the more rapidly the alcohol is delivered to your system. Right, because when you do it through the can method, as I do, right, uh, unless you shotgun it, but that's a whole different show. Right. If you do it through the can method, it's right. done in intervals, meaning right. you have a beer, you stand up, you scratch yourself. You have right. some chips, you have another beer. You have a third beer, you go hit your girlfriend. You have a fourth beer, right. you blame the dog for your troubles. Right. You have a fifth beer, you decide it's a good idea to call your boss and straighten him out on a few things. Well, I mean, actually, I mean, does it depend on, like, the structure of the bong? Because we have one, <laughs> my brother just made one. Keith, a, a, it like, depends on the dose of alcohol and how rapidly it is delivered. Depends upon whether you're cognizant enough and alert Ooh, we enough Cheech and Chong to, over here? to prevent do we know? that from from pouring right into your trachea. So just don't, you know. We construct one out of like a, like a fish. Keith, no, no, stop! I can't, I can't talk about it anymore. Keith, I can't do it. <laughs> Keith, you got to get a, a Keith, Keith. I don't know what to say. Get a, a kit for a ship in a freaking bottle and work on that. I've never. If he could only spend this like kind of that time, was a, that was a ship in a bottle. Okay. If he could only spend this kind of time on his studies, Drew. Uh, Tanya. Hi, um, I'm calling to talk to the doctor. Yeah, Tanya. Yeah. Um, I was wondering, um, how long it, because my friend told me, because I had a Norplant, I just recently got married and we're trying to have kids, how long does it take for it to wear out of your system? I think it's very quick. I, I don't know for a fact. I mean, I don't, I don't typically put them in and take them out. Should uh, I be worried then? Because we've been trying for three months. Oh, I'm sure it would be long gone by then. Wait, the nor plan will be long yeah, gone? Yeah, but... but you, Don't you have to have it removed? Yeah, you took it out, right? Yeah. Yeah, it, but you take... Sometimes it can take up to about six months to... If you've been cycling normally... Uh-huh. We've been having normal cycles. Yeah. Um, I would certainly give it a good six months before I, I worry too much about it. And, uh, you know, people don't typically get pregnant first time unless they're well, we 16 and, and uh, with somebody they don't like. Right, like an uncle. Right. Right, uh, that's when you're sure to get pregnant. Is it more likely to happen if we don't have sex as much? Because my husband says sometimes it's not as comfortable for him because we have it so much because we're trying to... 
havoc. Yeah, there. You know, you should get some of these ovulation. There's an, there are kits you can get over the counter that can sort of help you time when you're most likely to get pregnant. Have you have you seen those? Yeah. Yeah, get one of those and then time it with that, and that will increase your probability. Well, you want any other medications? No. The other thing I was going to ask is I'm I'm trying to lose weight though before I have the baby, and I'm taking Accutrim. If I get pregnant when I'm taking that, is it going to mess up? Yes. The don't do it. Don't take anything. A pregnant woman should be as pure as the driven snow biologically, pharmacologically. Take a lot of folate, okay? Okay, and but, I just wanted to tell Adam, I think it's really great that he stands up for being atheist because so am I. God bless you. <laughs> see, see, I said God. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know why I'm so enamored with myself and my own bad sense of humor tonight. Well, we have a couple of people that just joined us. We have Nev Campbell. Say hi, Nev. And we have Michael Gorgian. Say hi, Michael. <laughs> Hello. And they're from Party of Five. And they're here to help us out. And they're here to plug their show. And Nev is going to plug her movie, which is coming up May 10th. Am mm -hmm. I right? Mm -hmm. That's right. It's called The Craft. Yeah. And who's in that? And what's it about and all that? It's with Feruza Balk, Robin Tunney, Rachel True, and myself. Wait, what was the first name? Feruza Balk. Feruza Balk? <laughs> Yeah, interesting name. That's for the sure. astronomer, who's <laughs> or the, or the evil warlord, who's Feruza Balk? <laughs> There's no Feruza Balk. There is, believe it or not. One name. Yeah, no, that's two names. Feruza is the first name. Balk is the. Second. Oh, it's like Pia Zadora. <laughs> I never knew it was Pia. I just thought it was Pia Zadora. <laughs> yep, that's right. It's it's actually about witchcraft. It's about four young girls who get themselves into witchcraft and start to abuse it. Oh. Mm. oh, Adam, and, Adam, yeah. stop. Don't, the go, don't, go, be there. don't no, go there. Don't go there. I'm telling you, the only thing better than chicks in witchcraft movies is if they take them all and lock them up in a, in a prison. <laughs> then that is the hat trick. All right, so you got a movie coming out. That's right. Party of Five is kicking ass. Yeah. Now, it's been on for, is it three or four seasons? This is our second season. Oh, jeez, my name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah okay. Anne, your point? No, this is... I know this is going to sound bad, but it, it, it's a show that feels like it's been around for a while because it was like, oh, there's all those years when they were struggling, mm -hmm. and then there was those years when people were catching on, and then the later years when, they, yeah. when they got rid of they brought in Colonel Potter. <laughs> well, not quite, but no, the first season was the struggle, and the second season we've been doing well, so that's probably why. And you guys just got the Golden Globe yep. for Best Dramatic Series, right. beating out shows like... Chicago Hope. ER, NYPD Blue, and Murder One. Hmm. So, yeah. so folks had to, and you immediately walked in to the boss's office and demanded more money, right? <laughs> no, but that'll come. <laughs> Definitely. Michael, yeah. I feel like we're leaving you out. Tell us about yourself, Michael. Oh, I'm just an actor. <laughs> well, you play Nev's boyfriend on the show, correct? That, that is correct, yes. Yeah, and is there any, any sparks going uh, off? Off camera between the two of you? Uh -uh. Nothing? Not a chance. <laughs> Nev's actually a man and so <laughs> Nev, you have a boyfriend? I have a husband, Jeff. <laughs> okay, you gotta go. <laughs> Michael, you can stay. You got a boyfriend? No boyfriend. Good, you can stay. Thank you. You have a husband, but you're so young. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you marry him before, you know, your ship came in, so to speak? Um, we were just married this year actually. Oh. Mm. Now is he like an industry guy? He is in the industry, yes. Uh -huh. he, he had a sort of talk show thing in, in Canada. Oh, yeah. 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 I, you know, it's kind of a, a Suzanne Summers, Alan, uh, Hamill. Alan Hamill kind of thing. <laughs> He's going to be pushing you to, to play these little crappy casinos your entire career and, <laughs> and pedal all this junky exercise equipment. I, I'm telling you what's going to happen. Leave him now. Is no, it too late for an no. annulment? No. It's, it's not, not too late. <laughs> it's not too late for an annulment. Oh, he's cool. No, he's awesome. He's a comedian and, and musician. I'm just saying you have your old career ahead of you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. You guys want to, we're going to go to the phones. You want to help us out? You have no choice. I shouldn't even ask. You're going to jump in on these calls. You're going to give some good, hearty sound uh, pre-Valentine's Day advice. Kurt. Hey, guys. How's it going? Good. Uh, I, I masturbate uh, twice a day, and I can come four times in a row without you know, going limp. But when I have sex with my girlfriend, I can only come once. Then it takes me like 45 minutes to go get it up again, you know. I don't know if that's normal. Yes, <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the latter part is normal. <laughs> oh, the latter's normal? Yeah. Yeah, we talk about this all, all all the time. You know, I you guys may not listen to the show, but I'm very candid about my masturbatory habits. And 
And I can I speak for all men when I speak about masturbating, by the way, too. And I can say that guys hone this. Guys work on this harder than they work harder than than Kathy Rigby worked for the Olympics. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Harder than Alan Hamill pushes Suzanne Summers to peddle crappy merchandise. <laughs> Drew's getting pissed now. And what happens is, is they get it down, and then they get with someone, and it's a strange and unusual experience that their penis isn't used to. Michael? <laughs> I'll let Nev answer that one. But, Michael, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, sure, yeah. You have a routine. Yes, you have a routine, and I think uh, being with someone might, I don't know, cause you to... Uh, get out of that routine. It's different. Yeah, I mean, yeah. sex is good, but it's not the real thing, right? <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> I'm just trying to put words in your mouth. Kurt. Thank you. Yes. Kurt, I'm going to give the advice to you that I give to all listeners who have this problem. You have to recreate what goes on when you are master of your domain. Do you know what I'm saying? I see. When you're taking care of business, you have to get in that position. you got to lock the knees. you got to do what you got to do and then involve her into it. Do you see what I'm saying, Kurt? Yeah. I don't think he does. Do you, Drew? It's just such sensitive, compassionate advice. I, I just am overwhelmed. Well, just because we're talking about a sensitive subject doesn't mean I can't give real advice. I didn't say you couldn't. Oh, okay. Drew, come on. I want you to get more involved with the show. All right. All right. Here we go. Sean. Yeah. You're on Loveline. All right. Um, I like to get high. And no. uh, I've been dating this chick for about a year, year and a half now. And all of a sudden, the last couple of weeks, she decides that she doesn't like it anymore. Mm -hmm. The pot we're talking about? Huh? Yeah. Pot every day? Um, not every day, but... I I'm going to ask an interesting question. I think I've, you've heard me ask this question before. Have you not? You know what I'm going to ask? I, well, I'd like him to laugh. All right. That'd be a good first question. <laughs> Sean? Right. Yeah? Come on. Give me some sugar. <laughs> oh, no. No, no, no. Not the big oh. trumped up uh, out in the <laughs> cheap seats laugh. I want the, the pot smoking laugh. Um... Actually, I don't laugh anymore when I smoke pot. Mm, well, right. or not, I do Stop. when I'm. Do you remember the first time you really got? Do you remember the first time you really got high on pot? Oh yeah. What was that like? Um, it was weird. It was fuzzy. Okay, what did you think of pot the first time you really got a good high off it? I thought it was great. It was great. That's sure. that's the most. That's the strongest thing you could say about it. Um, it was excellent. Because because most most marijuana addicts will say they love it. Okay, and it, it, uh, if you have that kind of an intense euphoric response to that drug, I can predict with really 100% probability that you have an alcoholic biological makeup and that this is going to be a serious chronic condition for you unless you do something about it. And if, they, if you are indeed a marijuana addict, this is going to be the first in the series of losses that you're going to suffer as a result of preoccupation with this substance. Okay, so it's a pretty serious issue here, and it's not, it's not funny. It's not just about your girlfriend. It's about you and what you're going to do with your life and what you're going to do to yourself as a result of the biologic effect of this particular drug on you. Okay, well, I, I don't... I think you're that. bumming us high, Don. He, does, he doesn't want to hear me. Sean, listen. Uh, okay. Sean, Sean, Sean. Yeah. This is the voice of reason. It's okay to do it once in a while, but if it controls your life... Then if he's what do you mean by control? If you're a marijuana addict, the marijuana... Like your girlfriend leaves you because you're token out all the time. No, she, if, she does it every once in a Sean, while. It doesn't matter. That's what she wants you to do. If you lose things in your life, if you have consequences because of relation with a substance, that's a problem. I can tell you for sure that if you love that drug, and if you have an... Is there alcoholism in your family system, family uh, background? Yeah, my dad's an alcoholic. Yeah, and so that means that that's probably... The probability is then you're an alcoholic. And you're a marijuana addict, and this is going to be a progressive process for you, and this is going to be one in a series of losses. I mean, I didn't know you. I didn't know you had an alcoholic in your, fa in your family, but I could predict that based on the syndrome you're manifesting. Okay? I'm not stoned. I didn't even get that last part. <laughs> that I said? <laughs> yes. Syndrome you're manifesting. Okay, I'm hip now. Listen, Sean. Mm -hmm. Drew's saying you're going to continue to have problems, so you're going to have to try to kick it. And maybe she's but, a, she's a source of uh, of uh, motivation for you to help you. Yeah. 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 Sean, you're yeah. not going to be able to. He's not going to be. The thing is, your advice is sound. That okay, people want to smoke pot, so uh, fine, smoke pot. But but he's not going to be able to be an occasional pot smoker. Okay. He's a marijuana addict. I'm revising my first statement, Sean. Never. Go near a bong again so long as you may live. <sighs> mahalo. And mahalo. All right, real quick. Noah. Yeah. You're on Loveline with the uh, the crew from Party of Five. Uh-huh. Cool. 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Drew, this is for you. No. Okay, I was wondering if having anal sex can increase your chances of giving hemorrhoids. I would imagine it would. Oh, okay. Now, no, it does not take a genius to figure out this correlation. Do well, you know? I heard rumors and it did, and I heard rumors and it didn't, you know. But let me say, if you can, and you guys jump in on this, if you know anything about anal sex, or, or even if you don't, like I do, <laughs> it, and still continue to talk oh about God. it. Nev, is there something going on? <laughs> no. Do you have a skeleton on, in your you closet? Oh, my story. God. <laughs> Oh, shut up. <laughs> really? All right. We're, we're going to get to we're going to get the stories of butt love after this. But Noah. Yeah. Listen, if you can get hemorrhoids from laughing too hard, if you can get hemorrhoids from sitting on the toilet too much, mm -hmm. you certainly can get hemorrhoids from a guy ramming his penis in your butt. <laughs> All right. Does that make sense? Yeah. I'm no doctor, but that's my opinion. And we'll be back after this. Hello, darling. This is Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, and you're listening to Love Line. Oh, she certainly is the Mistress of the Dark, doing nothing 11 and a half months out of the year and then just making a ton of freaking money in a two-week period. That is the life I want. I have to get behind some holiday. It could happen. Which one? I'm thinking, like, Bastille Day or something. <laughs> Something, something different, you know. Yeah, I yeah. dress up like Napoleon and and like, you know, bring bring bands on at the amphitheater or something. Something, something to get out of this. One eight hundred L O V E one nine one one eight hundred five six eight thirty one ninety one. The fax number three one zero eight five four forty four fifty five. I'm Adam Carolla. That's Doctor Drew, he's a board certified physician. And over here to my right would be Nev Campbell and Michael Gorgian. They are the folks from Party of Five, which is on at 9 o'clock mm -hmm. on Wednesday evenings on the Fox Network. Yeah. And it's doing very well. Yes, now, extremely. It is? What, what's, what's, I mean, the word of mouth is real good and the awards are real good, but what are the ratings like? The ratings are going up. They've gone up, and they're at the... They're the best now that they have ever been. All right, but you, you look at these ratings, mm -hmm. you know, and, or somebody forces you to look at them. <laughs> and... Give me, I, and I know you. I know you live here in the community. You don't want to bash any other shows, but w what number are you guys coming in? Uh, out of the hundred? Yeah. Oh my I gosh, I don't even know. I think we're stuff. in like the sixties now. <laughs> you're in the sixties, okay? Whereas last year we were like ninety six or something. Give me, give me some. Yeah, you're like right below the <laughs> yeah. Kirk or something yeah. <laughs> like that, or anything on the WB network. But let me say this: <laughs> Give me a couple of shows that are beating you guys now, and that are just god awful. Uh, or forget about the god awful part. Just give me a couple of the shows that really pisses you off. The fact that they're beating you. Wow, I don't know. I, well, I know last year I was pretty upset because I knew that Full House was at like twenty something. Full <laughs> and we House. Were, and we were at ninety six. You know, yeah. Wonder. On 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 their seventy fifth year, <laughs> the two yeah. twins have gone from zygotes <laughs> to postmenopausal, <laughs> and they're still beating that's you guys. Right, that's right. Actually, I don't think they're on this year. The, the twins are actually producing their own stuff. Now, that's right. So. I I I look at them once in a while. I love The Simpsons. Mm -hmm. I love that show, yeah. and I'll look at the national ratings. I'll see them coming in like, I don't know, I'll just throw a number out, like 45th, and I'll see America's Stupidest Videos is coming yeah, in, like 37 know. points above it. I and know. I can't, I think, what is wrong with this country? And then I look at the the uh, ratings as they pertain, for as they go from state to state, and I see here they're in the top 10. And in New York, they're in the top 10. So somewhere in there, someone is really screwing with the curve. Oh, Do you yeah, know what absolutely. I'm saying? Yeah. Actually, we have a lot of affiliates in those places, <laughs> so I won't, I won't continue that line of thought. All right, we're going back to the phones, and this time we're going at it a new way. Okay. You guys are going to be all over this thing. Oh, You're going to no. be like locusts on, on, <laughs> on a crop. Am at least I right? you, you guys can see him when he's talking now. They took away that giant, that bulbous... It was thing. Yeah. It, yeah. it was like I was talking <laughs> into uh, Washington from Welcome Back Carter's <laughs> head. It was the hugest piece of styrofoam I've ever seen in my life. John. Yes. You're on Love Line. How's it going, guys? Hey, Good. John. Good. Hi. Uh, I want to say hi to the guys from Party of Five. Hi. Uh, congratulations on your Golden Globe. Thanks. That was really impressive. Yeah, shocking, actually. Um, so what's it like beating out ER and what was that other crappy show? Oh. <laughs> oh, no, they're, they're not bad shows. No, they're no, good but shows. Party Chicago Hope. <laughs> um, 
It was it was pretty amazing. I mean, we went down the red carpet line at the Golden Globes, and and all the film crews were asking, "What do you guys think? Do you think you're going to win?" The whole cast was pretty much saying, "Yeah, yeah, we've got a chance." And every single time, I was like, "Not a chance, no chance at all." Wow. I mean, I I know we're a good show, but I just I figured it would take a lot longer. Huh. And Golden Globe is largely based on balloting foreign. from the listeners. Isn't it? Payola, it's foreign, foreign press. press, foreign press, sex right. and, what, and payolas. What's the one that's based on the the hmm. uh, Emmys? Hmm. Is it I, don't the I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure. But I have a question for Dr. Drew. Yeah, John. What is the best way to quit smoking? I quit once. I put on about 40 pounds. For yeah. Two years. I uh, turned back up. Okay. I, there are lots of ways. There are lots of good ways. The one thing that I have found about tobacco addiction is that people really must be ready to stop. It's not just a casual commitment. Oh, I'm going to try again. You need to be sick of it and ready to stop. Have you ever tried to diet before? You know how sometimes if you just mess around, oh, I'm lose weight, I'm lose weight. But when you're really ready to lose weight, you'll you'll get serious, and that that's where you, kind of where your head's got to be at when you stop smoking nicotine. The nicotine patches are very helpful. There are smoke enters programs all over the country, and uh, amongst those things, if you are actually ready to stop, you'll stop. I heard a good way: you get a big jar, and uh, for two weeks, you throw your butts in the jar, and then you carry that jar around your neck. <laughs> oh, right, God. and after two weeks, you want right, to smoke. and you get this inmate to sodomize you every time you inhale. Wasn't yeah. that on a couple nights ago about sodomy? What's that, John? So didn't you guys have a subject about that a couple nights? Ago? I, it comes up every yeah, night. Adam, Adam seems to be preoccupied with it. Why? Because I bring it up. Yeah, why? Why, Drew? Yeah, why? Why? Because I'm comfortable with my own sexuality, yeah, that, that's and, I'm able, it. and that enables me to make fun of others. I see. Things are so high. Yes, that's why. We have the balls to talk about it. Yes, we have the balls to talk about sodomy. Thank you, John. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. I'm so, again, it's uh, 30 minutes in. I'm proud to be here. Yes, we're glad to have you. Christiana, lock the door, Ann. Christiana? Hi. Um, I'd like to say hi to like um, people on Party of Five, and they're one of my favorite shows. Michael and name. Nev. Thank and you. Yeah, and I have a, a question for Dr. Drew. Yeah, Christiana. Um, I heard that you can get STDs from um, toilet seats. That you can get STDs from a toilet seat? Yeah. Which one was it you were supposed to be able to contract? Um, I'm not sure. I mean, I, I'm not aware of any you can really get that way. I mean, I suppose under ideal circumstances, if some herpes virus was left in a mo moist environment there, something could happen. But for the most part, no. People are really weird about that, too. Nev, do you use those those uh, liners when you when you when you're abroad using toilets? <laughs> um, yes. You do, <laughs> or, or you could be like my wife, who will never not go into a, a public bathroom. There or you go. You just don't won't sit won't down do it. Like squat. Won't take our kids into a public bathroom to sit down. You know, <laughs> public bathrooms it depends are on what you're doing on the toilet seat. Well, I mean, we know what you're what doing, you but doing, Nev Michael? could be doing anything <laughs> on there. I mean, number one, two, even three sometimes. Whatever, yeah. Yeah, now see, I work I work construction for a lot of years, so I had I to use those porta potties. Oh no! Oh, Andy oh, let me tell you. Oh no! <laughs> Plus, because first off, the the roach coach, the the food wagons pulling up, and you know, construction guys aren't noted for their diet. These guys are eating like oh, carne asada and a chimichanga breakfast burrito and. A, 40 ounce or Clamato and Mr. Pib, and then they're going in there around new time and seriously doing some damage in that place. But what are you going to do? Because a lot of these sites, you know, there's no plumbing. You're up, you're working on some hill in Malibu or something. There's nothing for miles. You have to do it. But you know what? It's like joining a fraternity, man. Once you go in there, you come out, guys are cheering. They know. <laughs> They know you've joined. You've joined the elite group. It's like the Army Rangers, except for instead of you know freeing hostages, you're, you're just taking a dump. You know. Other than that's the same. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer. Yeah. You're on Loveline. Okay, I wanted to talk about being cheated on because I got cheated on yesterday, and it wasn't any normal situation. What happened? Okay, I had a couple friends over. One was a guy, one was a girl. My sister was here and her boyfriend was here. And the guy that was here is gay and he has a crush on my boyfriend. And somehow they all ended up in an orgy. With your sister? Yeah. And your sister's boyfriend? Uh-huh. And your boyfriend? Uh-huh, and my two best friends. Were, wow. they, were they doing drugs or alcohol or something? No, it just happened. How old are they? 16 and 17. They did this sober? Yeah. Really? 
Because usually everyone's loaded and does these things and then regrets it. Are there regrets? Are people apologetic to you? Are they understanding how you're feeling? Well, they messed they up the carpet pretty good, so they're... They don't care? Yeah, I didn't feel anything. Guess what? If they if they are cut from that... Jib. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> you, you want them out of your life. I'm terribly concerned about your sister and, and what's going to happen in that relationship. But your boyfriend is not somebody you want to keep around. I mean, that's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, Jennifer. And they have no concern. They have no empathy for you whatsoever. Even if they did, it sounds like they wouldn't care how you felt. Jennifer, all the flowers, candy, and explaining could never take this one away. I mean, this is a deal breaker, as we call them in the dating world. This guy did you a favor. Forget it. It's over. I, I, and find and, out what's up with your sister. I, I, how, your sister's how old again? 17? Yeah. Hmm. Now, what do you think? Wow. Kind of a dangerous situation, I think. No, really yeah, not to mention like, the real biological dangers that these yeah, people are, are exposing them. My boyfriend had the nerve to dump me. What? After? Because you made a stink about it? Because you made a deal about it? No. Uh, I was on the phone with him last night talking to him about it, and I was, like, really pissed off about it. I mean, anyone would be. But... Obviously. And he just dumps me. And I was like... Wait a second, I'm supposed to do that. So he was just doing that, well, he was, that was a preemptive. Preemptive yeah. dump. Yeah, very, exactly. very tactical maneuver, I gotta say. But this guy knew you were gonna dump him, so he did it. Plus, he just didn't want to deal with the consequences. Right, he knew right. he was wrong. Right. He just took the easy way. He took the coward's way out. Right. But all the way. Yeah, all, uh, all the, the way through. This whole thing is a cowardly deal. But Jennifer, he did you a favor, ultimately, in the long run. Yeah. I'm just sorry he violated uh, a family relation. He really, he really, not to mention the sister. But he drove a wedge between the sisters. Well, and, actually, and, no, put stop, the stop, okay. stop. <laughs> and uh, uh, and uh, and that's 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 horrible. I mean, that's that's bad. Mm -hmm. What can you say about somebody that does that sort of thing? Jennifer, mm -hmm. this is his problem, her problem, his problem, and her problem. And I guess that takes care of everybody. You hold your head up. This guy did you a favor. Move on and pick your boys a little more carefully next time. We're back with Nev Campbell and Michael Gorgian from Party 05, the hit Fox TV series about the uh, kids of all ages living together. The parents died, am I right? That's right. And your older boyfriend on uh, older brother, sorry for that Freudian <laughs> slip, wow. I'm working into something, has a girlfriend on the show that I'm... I'm seriously oh, thinking about right. stocking. Right. I He's love, been talking about her for about a, I love a her. year. Yes, yeah. and now that I found out you're married, Nev, I'm I'm going to set my stocking <laughs> sights on her. There you go. Is she a single girl? Um, I'm not sure. You're not sure? <laughs> no, I'm not sure. Don't you guys talk or anything? We do talk. We just haven't talked in a little while. But you'd know she was married. Well, she's not married. Oh, okay. I can tell you that. Well, she's that's single. We, uh, okay. Okay. There you she's go. very young. How old is she? No. She looks old. I mean, she no, looks like she's in her mid twenties. He's talking about Paula. What do you think I'm talking Paula. about? The, you oh. sicko! What do you think I'm talking about? Love. The little sister. You said love. She said love. He oh. said love. You talk? No, I don't know. No, I want the blonde. The blonde. The blonde. Paula. Oh, Paula. Plays Kirsten. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm just she saying. You know, when you see her. Uh, oh, when you see her at Universal Studios this Saturday. Oh God. From <laughs> twelve to four, I may be up there. I'm afraid you will I'll be. I'll be the guy wearing the stocking mask, clinging to the hillside in the back. Yes, talking to a stuffed animal so and chain smoking. You guys are going to be up at Universal Studios Saturday, February seventeenth, nineteen ninety six, two to four, to sign autographs and whatnot. Yes. And you hate that, don't you? Well, I don't love it. You want the fans <laughs> well, you want the fans to come out and see you and you'd gladly yeah. do it, but you still hate it. No, it's really nice to see the fans and stuff cuz I mean, I'm used to being in, in theater and you get an immediate reaction from the audience. So it's kind of a nice thing cuz this is our only chance to right. to meet the and audience. It, but after about 4 hours of smiling right. and saying the same thing, it can get tiresome. Right. Where, where are you going to be there? I don't know. They just put you up somewhere. We're at Universal Studios. They'll be I'm sure they'll be signed. People <laughs> people will find them. All right, we're going back to the phones. You guys jump in. Jason Hey, how's it going? You're on Loveline. Hi. How's it going? Good. Hey. Hey, I just want to want you to know I went out and bought some towels today, and it worked <laughs> like a charm. Good man. Yep. Okay, questions for the doc. Jason. Um, yeah, I've been dating this girl for about a month now, and we're kind of getting intimate and that kind of stuff, and, and I start fingering her. I can only get my finger in about an inch, if that, and there's like a wall there. 
Is she a and virgin? She's a virgin. That's but, that's normal. That's a, that's a hymen membrane. Would that matter if she uses like a tampon or? Uh, she seems to be more. Like, she seems to be kind of experienced with that kind of stuff. Is she a virgin? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you're running in. Yeah, you're you're running into God's barrier. He he put that there mm -hmm. to protect her from guys like you. <laughs> And I guess you keep that no matter. I, I thought I thought that stuff went though, doctor. I mean, I thought that stuff. Not necessarily. I mean, yeah, it can. But how old? All right. How old do you think you could get before, if you were a virgin and still keep your hymen intact? In your twenties, I'm sure. Oh really? Yeah. Wow. Jason. Yeah. So what do you want the doctor to tell you? I just want to know what it was. Cause I have no one. I've been asking around, and no one really has. You've right been asking before. around. Well, I mean, you put I mean, the word out on the street. You went and asked uh, Huggy Bear yeah, and some yeah. of your other informants. When, like, uh, using a tampon break that? Or... Uh, I can or not. Okay. But you don't, wait a minute. But you have, you're going to have your, you have your hymen and your period at the same time, right? Right. right. Well, how do you use a tampon then? Yeah. You, you, it doesn't have to rupture it, the tampon, no. You mean it just. It's not a, it's not a occlusive membrane. It's not? No. It's not like a mini tramp or something. <laughs> I mean, I pictured you like trying to put something in there and have it go rocketing out. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. That's that was good. very tasteful. That was good. So you mean you can like go around it? Through it. Through it without puncturing it. Without rupturing it. Well, forget, you forget know it. what I'm talking about. Let's just get no, on no with one the show. knows what you're talking about. Yes, Drew. you do. No, Nev. Do you know what he's talking about? I think I'm getting the gist. Yes. Okay. Let's see. All right. Nev, when did you lose your virginity real fast? Uh, uh, wow, 16. 16? Mm -hmm. That seems to be about, uh, is that about the average? That's right, Michael? Not these days is younger, it seems. But I think actually the average is still like yeah. 17 for men, 16 for oh, women, something like that. That's good, I guess. Michael, when did you lose your virginity? Uh, 12, <laughs> 15. Really? 15 or 12? 15. 15? Yeah. The yeah, thing okay. is, this, pro this society has a huge problem with teen pregnancy and people engaging in sexual activity before they're ready even a, a few hundred people like that is a problem but mm -hmm. we have thousands and thousands of people even so the average is still older than that oh. Oh. jenny yeah you're on love line hi um i had a comment for dr drew mm -hmm. but i want to say to nev and michael congratulations on best drama thanks thank you and um me and my sister think your show is the bomb and everything but um I called, like, last week, and I had um, the manager who was violent or whatever, and he was getting those mood swings, and you Yes. Dr. Drew told me that it might be a drug problem. Right. And I found out that he's been doing cocaine. There you go. So uh, I just wanted to say that you were right. He, like, I saw him doing it or whatever. I was over at his friend's apartment. He, you know, you heard me earlier in this show talking about people losing things because of addiction. You're going to watch this guy start to lose things like his job and his interpersonal relationships. and. Uh, yeah, I like, don't know if I should tell my uh, other head boss about I it. I suggest you just kind of stay out of it unless it uh, directly affects you. Yeah, but this guy's throwing number two pencils well, if at that happens, her all then, day. Then you tell the proper appropriate authority, that's all. He's, Who's the appropriate authority? The boss, her, her, what do you call him? The big boss? Um, The head manager. Head manager. Right? I mean, there, there are, people have to understand there are consequences for their actions, and you can take those consequences, and that certain things are not tolerable. Otherwise, stay out of it if, if you can. Okay. All right, Jenny? Yeah. Drew is always right. That is one thing you'll learn from working on this show, unless he's debating me. Shannon. <laughs> Hi. Hi, you're on Loveline. Hi. Um, I need some advice about my boyfriend. We're going to give it to you. Okay. Well, we've been going out for about two and a half months or so, and he's... He's, like, really clingy, but it goes beyond that. It's like he wants me to be with him, like, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and he pouts if I'm not with him. You know, I'll go to see a friend of mine, and he'll pout for, like, two days. Aww. And, I mean, he's cried about this, and it's just he's really feminine in that way. I mean, more feminine than any girls I know. I, that's not necessarily a feminine trait. <laughs> sure that's, it that's is. Not, that's not fair to women. How's no. he looking a skirt, Shannon? Bottom line. <laughs> Actually, I put him in one once. <laughs> well, let me tell you the problem with women here. Nev, you back me up on this because mm -hmm. I know you'll agree. You women, <laughs> you want guys, you want real sensitive guys. You want guys who aren't scared to cry when they see uh, movies about pigs or something like that. Mm -hmm. You want men that aren't scared to say the things you want them to say, to commit, to, to love the children and all that. But when you find that guy, he's a wuss. 
And then you're turned off to him sexually. Well, this guy sounds really clingy. Which is different than what like, you're describing, Adam. Yeah, it sounds to me like he's really dependent on he the relationship. He has to, like, sit next to me, like, practically on top of me, you know, all the time when we're together. And he's always, you know, he always has to be touching me in some way. And How, you know, how terribly overwhelming that must be for you. It is. And uh, it's very difficult to sustain a relationship like that. It's kind of like running me away, and I don't exactly yeah. know how to tell how, him how is he sexually? Very good. Oh, really? Yeah. Sorry to blow your theory, Adam. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> what, what were you blowing? What? He's good sexually? Yeah. Th th there's nothing about his behavior that precludes that. Yeah, but no, wait a minute. <laughs> Because he could be too, you know, uh, feminine in the sack. That's not feminine. I'm calling it feminine. He's too well, touchy-feely in the sack. I've asked him about that. I'm like, are you sure you don't have, like, other sexual tendencies? You know, and he's, he's positive, no... You know, he Look, if he's like that interested in fusing with her, he might be very into the, the the sort of physical act. Just because he's a sensitive guy doesn't mean. He's yeah, the, the, the problem the problem is not right, that he Nev, can't you get. Stay wait. out of this. <laughs> the problem is that not that nobody he, asked you about this call. <laughs> the problem is really not that he can't engage in that kind of intimacy; it's that he can't pull back from it. Right. And he can't set up boundaries and can't have a, be a person in a relationship where he has to be fused with her all the time. He's very dependent. And you need to you need to help him set some boundaries. He's oh. going he's going to experience it as rejection at first. You you have to reassure him that he, you're not rejecting him. You just need certain that's things. What going right now, you're I'm not rejecting him. About it yeah. and, don't argue. Don't you, argue. It's well, not rejection. I'll talk to him. Stay supportive. Let but, me talk to him, Shannon. Oh, yeah, that'll not cure here. everything. No, because here, Valentine's Day is tomorrow. He's going to spot weld himself to your thigh, <laughs> and you're going to drag him around like a freaking koala bear the entire day. Do you understand? Yeah. This is going to be the worst day of your life. I know. Your right side is going to fall asleep from him cutting off the circulation. Yeah. Well, we've been trying to discuss this, and he un he says, yeah, oh, yeah, he understands he can't be so clean. No, 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 he no. won't get it. He won't get I'll it. I'll tell you what'll do it. What? Rent the Dirty Dozen. He has to see Lee Marvin <laughs> and, and Jim Brown. He has to see the way men operate. When they're together, attraction. Yeah, you may, yeah, you make it. You may, you make it a little wood from Lee, Sh <laughs> Shannon. Uh huh. You're gonna have to wear the pants in this relationship. You're gonna have to explain to him what you need, and and like Drew said, in in do it no uncertain terms, but let him know that you're not shooing him not away. You're rejecting him, you're not, you're, and it's and he has to be a person, and you have to share things together, and you have to come apart, and right. uh, he has to learn to do that. It's not gonna happen right away. It's not gonna happen easily. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks. All right. And, and here's a real joke. If they get married six months from now, he's going to be arguing with her. Come on. I'm just, I just want to go uh, shoot a few <laughs> games of pool. Come on. What's the big deal? I'll be back. Come on. It's just a softball tournament in Toronto. It's only three weeks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a bizarre energy in here tonight. Kind of I blame you two, by the way. <laughs> oh, thank you very Because much. you're the only inconsistent thing here. <laughs> Drew's here every night. We got the mic thing settled. I got the same mug I always use. All right, one more quick call. Brian. Hi, this is Kim. I'm, I have a question for... Oh, I'm sorry, Kim. Yeah? Yes, yeah, sorry. Hi. I have a question for Nev or Hi. for Dr. Drew. Mm -hmm. Why do I have the sense that this probably will not be for either of us? But go ahead. Well, it's probably for a female. It'd probably be an easier question. Mm -hmm. Well, unless you're a weird guy. But um, <laughs> my question is, um, my boyfriend and I, um, he gives me really good oral pleasure, but I can't return it. I'm just, like, not good at it. I can't. So this would be for Nev. Adam. <laughs> Nev and Adam. <laughs> Nadam. And I just can't, I don't know, get the hang of the deep throat whole thing. And oh, jeez. Like, Oh, wow. <laughs> Drew's delicate sensibilities were offended there, Kim. Watch yourself. Sorry. Nev, any tips? Any quick tips? Wow. Um, Do you need a prop, by the way? No, okay. no, thanks. Thanks. I think I'm okay. Um, I think you just have to make sure that you're comfortable with doing it. I think if you're having a problem doing it, maybe you're not comfortable with the act itself. And maybe you're not confident with yourself. Sexually. Well, I'm really comfortable with my boyfriend. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not, like, uptight or anything. I just mm -hmm. can't seem to get... I don't I know, help you. You don't enjoy doing it? Yeah. Well, no, I... A Adam has a well, parable here that will make <laughs> will, that will relax you a little bit. About Blow jobs are like pizza. <laughs> That's the way guys look at it. Everybody likes pizza. Some people don't like certain types as much, but they still like it. You put the worst pizza in the world on this table, I'm going to eat the whole thing. Why? Because it's pizza. So, pizza is pizza, 
Blowjobs are blowjobs. They all fall under the good category. They're all scrumptious. It's just some are thin crust and have the pepperoni. B R. Yes, thank you, Michael. We are back with Nev Campbell and Michael Gorgian from Party of Five, the hit TV series and winner of the Golden Globe Outstanding Drama, kicking a lot of serious uh, celebrity packed. High budget ass along the way, I must say. Congratulations. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191, 1 800 568 3191. Fax number 310 854 4455. I'm Adam Carolla. That's Dr. Drew. This is Loveline. Oh, I want to read a quick fax that Drew just rammed up me. I saw the girl you got on tonight. Uh, I guess he's referring to Nev in kids uh, in a kids in the hall episode. I was wondering if she remembers um, if she remembers it and has anything to say about it. Well, to be honest, I've never seen it. A lot of people tell me it plays quite a bit, but I had a blast. Kids in the hall is a great show. Those guys are great. I had so much fun. And you watch news radio? News radio, no. Because aren't aren't? Oh, yeah. um, That's another one. She's mad about it. They're, they they beat her. Yeah, but that's a good show. <laughs> They're a good show. They can beat no, her. Like, it's like I, a Return of Hee Haw or Hee Haw the <laughs> College Years or something that's beating you by 30 slots. That's when you get pissed. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But, yes, I did do Kids in the Hall, and I had fun. I played a private school girl who murders her math teacher for staring at her. Really? Yeah. And did you work at a pizza parlor? No, she like went into the pizza parlor in a couple. But of you days. were in the pizza parlor. I, yes, I was. Uh-huh. Okay, you can stop right so, now. So <laughs> enough said. Well, this I is think... Nev. I think this is Nev's assertiveness training you tonight. <laughs> yeah, she's learning though, right? She stopped you. That's good. I think I've made my point. <laughs> And we'll be back in 10. Well, we're going to continue along with the show now, the show we call Love Line. We're going back to the phone. So you guys are going to be all over this one. Of course. This is your call. Okay. I don't even know what it is, but it's your call. Robin. <laughs> uh, hi. Um, Nev? Yes, hi. Hi. Um, I was wondering where you're from. I'm from Toronto, Canada. Oh, are you? Yes. Oh, okay. I just wondered where you're from. Did I disappoint you? You sound disappointed. Mm. <laughs> no, no. I was just wondering. Uh, okay. Why? Um, just because I just was curious because I never heard where she was from. I really like the show a lot. Thanks a lot. You want to know where Michael's from? Yeah. Guadalajara. <laughs> where oh, are you really? from, Michael? Oakland. Oakland. Beautiful country. Oh, really? oh yeah. Yeah, very nice. I think we're on up there somewhere. That's right, we are. You don't like Toronto? No, Toronto's oh. <laughs> lovely. Fantastic. Some of the best strip clubs <laughs> in the world are in Toronto. Yes, absolutely. It is a beautiful place, and there's there's many, <laughs> many interesting things to see and, and, and lovely hookers to pay. Oh, I'm just kidding. Thank you very It's beautiful much. country. You know, they, they film... Uh, city, actually. Yeah, I mean Canada's city. Yeah, country. yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> Damn foreigners coming in here raising hell. Jay! Yeah, uh, is it uh, Drew there? Yeah, I'm here. You seen that show, Party of Five? Me? Do you, do you like it? Yes. I've never seen it. I've seen Party of Five. I've thought when it first, you used to be on a Sunday night or something, didn't it? Or Saturday? I, was it? No, it was on Very, Mondays. very beginning. Yeah, he's on on, I, we used to watch it then. Uh, but somehow I used to be able to see it. It was earlier, though. It was before we broadcast this thing. It was like at 8 o'clock That's or right. something. That's yeah, right. so see? I never catch it. Anyhow. Yeah, fantastic, Jay. Great etiquette. Go ahead. Um, is masturbation, uh, uh, what would you call it, an addiction? It's not really, because addiction implies that there's progression and that there are progressive losses as a result. Uh, while there can be losses that incur- you incur as a result of preoccupation with this behavior it's more of an obsession than it is an addiction so it has negative behavior though it's it's an obsession it can be unpleasant and preoccupying okay if it's an obsession can it be broken yep if it's an obsession there's something wrong and exactly what it is i don't know what are you at give us a number jay be honest Oh, man, come on now. Come on, Jay. Not as bad as the guy, that first caller you had, what, three times a day? Twice a day. Are you kidding? No, no. That's nothing. Jay? Yeah? If you're not going to be honest, I'm going to be forced to hang up on you. Oh, nothing bad, man. Four times, five times a week. Jay, what are you worried about? You're a little light. 
I wouldn't hang out with you. You you would screw up my rhythm. All right, Jay. I don't know, man. I just wondered if it was something that it was uh, over the limit. You know, look where... only if it's if it is causing you to turn to that as opposed to socializing with your peers, mm -hmm. and but and the, doing uh, more and having a productive. Are you life. doing it on the boss's desk? No. No. All right, then he has no problems. Four or five. What the hell kind of call was that? Four or five times a day, <laughs> Michael. That's a that that's a good Sunday afternoon for you, isn't it? Yeah, morning. Yeah, I mean, right <laughs> before the paper hits the door, you're at four. Yep. By the time the coffee's made, you're at what six? Seven or eight. Seven or eight. Yeah. Before the uh, sports center comes on ESPN, where are you at? I take a little break then. Oh yeah, yeah. right, right, <laughs> right. A little refractory then... period. You got to towel off. You got to yeah. get. You got to make some... it up in the afternoon. Right. About ten. 10, 15 more. Four or five times a day. <laughs> Dave, a week. a week. What the hell is that? Dave. Hello. You're on Loveline. How are you guys doing? Good. How's everybody doing? Good. Good. What is Our going on? <laughs> Wait a minute. He's not I'm interested. I'm stopping the show. <laughs> I am now. Wait, hold on. I'm 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 putting Dave on hold, and put, I'm put having some music on or something. It put some music on because I some, something to uh, lift this uh, the energy. I'm here a having bit. like I'm I'm putting out a cosmic <laughs> alert. No, 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 no nothing I offensive. Went, I went like Yanni or something because I really have a to march. think. A I, march. I want to march. No, I don't want to march. Something, or, or a or a a, a um, pa pa type thing. All right, yeah. fine. It'll do. Roy Clark is fine. All I know is. The rhythm in this room <laughs> has felt weird since the. Th it's like trying to play handball against the Drakes. Yeah, right. From the moment I walked in here, yes. something was up. Now I'm not going to blame you two. But you will. Even though we're always fine without <laughs> you, but I uh, know I'm not going to blame you two because uh -huh. we have every guest under the sun in this place, and we have some tremendous a holes. We have people that are stoned off their ass. Uh -huh. We have people that won't shut up. We have people who have to like turn their mics <laughs> off, and you guys are fine. Uh -huh. Now you're not doing a ton of talking, but that's okay because. I usually just steamroll like I'm doing now and control Absolutely. the whole show. So ultimately, I blame myself. But there has been a rhythm in here that has been weird. And, and, and it's it's no way that they could be responsible for the way these callers are calling. No, the callers and have the all same the rhythm. callers same have been rhythm. like, Hi, how are you? I'm from Finland. It's like every... <laughs> We took every third word out of their sentence. A little like, slow. The strobe light on. There's right. something going on. Yeah. So we're yeah. not coming back. We are not. <laughs> no, we're coming back. You're just no. not leaving to a straight. No, this you're out. not. Neither one of you is going anywhere. <laughs> now here's the deal. We're coming back and we're coming back strong because you know what? I just popped the hood of Love Line, and you know what I saw? What? I saw the rotor was bad. And I went ahead and I pulled the cap off the distributor and I replaced it. What's a rotor? The rotor's the thing that spins around. You're screwing up the momentum! <laughs> I thought this was fuel injected. The rotor spins... It, <laughs> the rotor spins around. Uh, it goes off uh, off the distributor and it spins around the cap and it fires. It sends spark to all the cylinders. Okay, right. We are an eight-cylinder, uh, high-compression, hemi-head, fire-breathing, M.O., big block... Blown, injected, Mopar engine here. And we've not been firing on all cylinders. That's true. So I'll, it, would you, he's got a sound of a freaking Citroen or a Yugo or something going on. I'm, I'm talking about a dragster engine, Mike. The point is, is I checked under the love line hood. Right. I reconnected a few of the wires. Right. I checked the timing. I pulled the, I pulled it out. We, we were retarded. I advanced it a little all bit. Right, right, right. So here we go. We're going back to the phones. Drew, you pick a phone. That's the one. Here we go. Some go, some blow. Pick a call, Drew. Well, how about the guy we were talking to? Oh, okay. No, he's a loser. Yeah, then just pick the next call. Sorry, yes. Okay, we're going to the next. Wait, <laughs> okay, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Darcy, you're on Love Line, damn it. Hello. Hey. Hi. Hey. Hello. Hey. hey. Okay. <laughs> um, I just had a little problem that I wanted to say. Don't fade on us <laughs> now, baby. Go ahead. Go. Okay. Um, oh, by the way, I love you guys' show, Thanks. and I'm going to miss you guys because I'm moving out of town, and um, you guys don't come in where I'm moving to. Oh, oh. Which show is she talking about? for the premature uh, <laughs> thanks <laughs> there, but yeah, I think he's talking about our show. But you love Party no. of Five, don't no. you? I've seen it. Uh, I used to watch it. You love it. <laughs> Keep it rolling, baby. Cool. Okay. I love it. <laughs> but um, my, <laughs> my problem is um, you guys always talk about how women can, ma or, can have orgasms, like multiple orgasms. And I never do. I always, if I if I have um, sex with someone, it's like it's hard to get to that first that orgasm, and then after that, I'm just done. You know, it's like I wait for him to finish, and I don't know. It's kind of like a problem, and I don't. That, no, that would be that would be normal. Yeah, that is that is. 
that is that's normal. normal yeah I mean, just because you guys always, I've heard women, women call up and say, yeah, I can have like 10 or 12. They're a very vocal minority oh. is what it is. They well, can have 10 orgasms, so they have a parade every week, uh, and, and they pay homage to their multiple orgasms, and then everyone listens, and everyone thinks, wow, everyone but me is having multiple <laughs> orgasms. Nev, am I right? Uh-huh. Come on, remember the big block, Hemi? Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Well, I, I think, I think. If you're with a person long enough, you probably can, you know, uh, when you're more comfortable with them. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You mean work it out. Yeah. So you need to date Adam is what. Oh. <laughs> yeah, because we've been, we've, we've been firing on all doing. cylinders for like an hour and ten minutes now. <laughs> you're, you're fine, Darcy. There's nothing wrong with you. Uh, you know, maybe you're having some discomfort with the person you're with now. Maybe, the, you know, some. Like, you know, it doesn't, it happens with everyone, really. So I was just, every guy I've been with, but. I just wanted to know if that was normal then because, I mean, if I, I kind of get bored, I kind of just go, okay, well, now I'm done. So I never really say that, but, you know, <laughs> whenever he's done, go you know, <laughs> contact me. I'll be sleeping. Oh, <laughs> oh no. Oh, no, no. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> now, you've been with this guy for a little while? Well, it's, he's not my boyfriend. He's kind of my sexual partner. <laughs> well, you see, that's it. There's no feelings between you well, two. Actually, I really love him a lot, but he doesn't have the same feelings for me, so I kind of which, uh, but that's yeah. throwing things up. Yeah. You need the feelings, Nev. Yeah, you need the feelings, man. I mean, <laughs> got to be there. That's why women don't go out and get hookers. Right. And that's why men go out and get hookers right. because for men it's a physical sensation. Absolutely. For women it's an emotional bond. Like if you went out and got a There's hooker, no point otherwise. you guys would have to go to Cancun for the weekend and then you'd have to like meet your folks, right? Right, exactly. You would have to get the hooker to meet your folks before you had good sex with the hooker. Yeah. And the guy is just the opposite. He can have better sex if she doesn't speak English and doesn't get out of the car. Wow. Right? Wow. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Which is a starting realization for most of humanity. It is? Well, Not for this one. Can I put one more problem out to you guys? Quick. quick? Um, I, I have a problem with blowjobs, too. <laughs> I won't do it. And I and everybody says, "Oh God, you can't." You, you then have don't to, do you it. Have to. You don't have to. I, well, I'm not that I not guys, but other people are like, "You're missing out." You're my friends, kind of like, "Oh, it's a fun thing," and other guys are like, "Whoa, you're just." Well, you'll out. you'll decide what what you want to do. Don't let other people. Are we, are we talking about Hummers? Yes. I'm sorry, Ann. Yes. Ann was in my ear at that mm-hmm. time. Pizza. Yeah, you talking about pizza? <laughs> you don't want to do it? No. No wonder this guy doesn't want to commit. <laughs> All right, Darcy. Okay. I'm sorry for being cold, but. Just get your get get with someone who you can connect with emotionally, and the sex will follow. <sighs> now you guys have You're to slowing leave. Slowing down. You're slowing down. It right? really it is well, your fault. Yeah. No, it is not. It is your fault. fault. You're taking those deep right, sighs I'm, after. Yes, every you're call. depressed. I think. I know, because I'm disappointed in myself, that's all. Oh, no. I thought there was more nah. in me than this. Nah. I shot my wad Sunday night, and that was it. The rest of the show is downhill. Now, you guys have to run along? Yeah, we're working early, early in the morning. You can't stay another seven minutes until well, you know, we break? it's been so exciting. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. As a matter of fact, you guys are cursed. <laughs> Good riddance to the two of you. No. Yeah, we kind of have to go. All right. So then we get to say goodbye to Nev Campbell. Ciao. And Michael Jer- <laughs> <laughs> Jurgens? No, that was a Sorry. Freudian slip. Gorgian. Am I saying that right? Yeah, Because you, you haven't stopped me so far. No. A that's, party that's of five exactly right. who were kind enough to come in here, sit here, not help our callers and plug their show. Hey, we they, helped. Okay. They helped. And they All took, right. they took a, a... Thank you very much. I'm lashing out at this you point. Are. Do you understand? My ego it's is so crushed. your problem. That's what you have to realize. It's I know, but problem. God forbid I should turn it in on myself. I'm <laughs> lashing out at the guests. Right. But we do want to thank you guys for coming by. We do want to tell everyone to head up to Universal Studios uh, the 17th. That would be this Saturday between the hours of noon and four to check out not only these two, but the rest of the cast. Mm-hmm. And get, get an autograph yeah. and get looked at uh, cross-eyed by these two stars <laughs> and enjoy yourself. So thanks for coming by, guys. Thank we you so appreciate much. appreciate it. And we're going back to the phones. Dave? Hey. You're on Loveline. How's it going? Good. Um, question for the doc. Yeah, Dave. Okay. Oh, Dave, you were the one that triggered that whole tirade that Adam went off on. That's right. Yeah. Dave, let's go. Okay. <laughs> Mock Chanel. Okay. Um, okay, I'll talk quick. Uh, doc. Yeah. I have glaucoma uh, as a side effect from uh, prednisone. Oh, really? What's prednisone? It's an anti it's a 
corticosteroid anti-inflammatory. Oh, okay. Well, he said. Anyhow, and why were you on it? I have Addison's disease. And yeah, but if, if you're on Addi- if you have Addison's, you should have been just getting replacement doses. Uh, what are you? What's the Addison's from? It's idiopathic. And they put you on more than you needed, and you got glaucoma. Well, I that was on a bigger dosage, and then they I moved down a little bit. Uh, I see. So they sort of they sort of overshot. But anyhow, I as a side effect from that, I have uh, Addison's disease or glaucoma. Right. And I heard from several people that if you smoke marijuana that uh, the pressure in your eyes will go down. Uh, and I just wanted to know if that was true or That what. is true. It is true. It is true. Because I've asked my uh, optometrist before also, and he says, no, there's no such thing. And, it uh, is true. But uh, guess what? What? There's about 100 other medications that are 10 times more effective than that okay. with no side effects. Uh-huh. Okay? So uh, wh- 100 that are 10 times? There are... E- glaucoma is a pretty easy tr- th- uh, disorder to treat these days. I mean, there's 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 ten commonly prescribed eye drops. I mean, real common. They work very well. That make you no, impotent. They give you no little if any side effect. And well, uh, and marijuana has side effects and it can have problems. And you know, uh, that's, right. that's, that's my point your about side the, hurts from eating too much. No, that's my my point with the the therapeutic use of marijuana is that yes, it needs to be studied more. But for goodness sakes, people claim that it's uh, such a great drug for this and that it isn't. There's all these other things that are much much better. And the only people that I've ever had insist upon taking it are people who are marijuana addicts and like the way they feel when they take it. Okay, if you're going to die of AIDS and you want to take marijuana, fine. Well, there are certain... But if you're going to have a lifetime of glaucoma and you're going to use that as your therapy for that glaucoma, no. Well, all right, but here's a school of thought. There's certain people that don't want to take what they consider to be chemicals that have been manufactured by... It's shocking. Yes. I mean, you can eat Amanita phylloides and drop dead in a couple hours if you want. That, then that's a natural plant. Well, yeah, I know these, these drugs are derivatives of, chem, of, of chemicals and, some of the and, most and found in nature. toxic and stuff is in nature. Stuff. I'm telling you where some people's heads are at. Yeah, I know. Some people don't look at the man and Big Brother and Upjohn and the pharmaceutical companies and all that, and they, 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 think, they think that, that, that these drugs are like, uh, you know, like uh, carcinogens or something, you know, because they're, they come in a white pill or because they're, they, you know, they smell like ether or something like that. So they want to they wanna, they wanna do it like the herbal way. They want to do it like the Indian way. Do you know yeah, what I'm but, saying? But, that's yeah. fine, but the Indians never intended that. It, well, they're into the, peyote, the, the, the but thinking it, is not now gambling, logical. But, it's not good. It's not sound thinking. It just isn't. Right and now, people really don't understand what illness is. People don't see, in this country, don't see people who are sick, who have problems. And so there's a certain amount of denial and lack of understanding about what they're even thinking about, the choices they're even making. Dave, so. have you smoked pot? No, I haven't. Do you want to smoke pot, or do you just want your glaucoma relieved? I just, you know, I don't mind either way. I just kind of was concerned about my glaucoma, because right now I'm on bait, bait optics. Right. And so, I, you know, I just wonder. There's a, there's a bunch of other stuff that falls bait Which optic. is more effective as to... Bait optic is more effective. Okay, that's what okay. I'm curious. One other question. Real quick. We're okay. losing it here. Okay, what are, what Wait, are We're worse than before. I don't care. I've given up the ship. I'm yeah. just going down with it at this point. Okay, whatever happened to Ricky, Ricky Reckman? Hey, that was a perfect question. He has moved on to bigger and better things. Just, you know. He, God bless him for not being here tonight. He probably, he probably would have moved on right now anyway. Rusey. Rusey? Rusey. Yeah, what's up? You got ten seconds to start speaking English, or I'm hanging up. Okay, how's it? Hello, my name is Ruzi. How are you? What Good. Is Who is this? Who am I talking to? All right, that's enough of that. I can't take this anymore. Steve. Hey, what's up, guys? You're on Love Line. Hey, I love your show. Fantastic, buddy. I got a kind of a problem here. Yes. Uh, there's this girl that I've liked for about two years now, and everybody says that she really likes me, but I haven't seen it from her. I was wondering if there's, you know, something I could. Day or two. You've been dating her for two years, or you've just had this... I've just known her for two years. At a distance, you've had these feelings for her. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and it's, and it's a them. woman's job to come up and tackle the man. Right. And start forcing sex on him. She tried to in class. In fact, she tried to stab me in the middle of class. That is a form of attention and affection. What did she try to stab you with? Uh, I don't, this little pink thing she had on her keychain. She jumped over, like, two desks. And... All right, Steve, she likes you. <laughs> Do you that? like her? Yeah, a lot. Make her your Valentine's. <laughs> okay? Okay. Wow. 
everyone should have problems like Steve. I can, wow. This guy is thick as a brick. Two years. I can't believe it. Becky, real fast. You're on Loveline. Um, yes. Um, I have a question. I had an abortion back in August of 95. Uh-huh. And within the last three or four months, periodically after sex or during sex, mm-hmm. I get a lot of white discharge on the condom. Mm. And afterwards, I'm very sore on the inside and, like, jolting pains on the outside. Could you just but, have a yeast infection or something? Um, I don't. It's only the discharge is on the condom. I don't. I mean, it, 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 it kind of sounds like a vaginal infection of some type. I mean, there are plenty of other things it could be. I mean, you could have endometriosis. You could have some residual infection. How far along were you when you had the abortion? Um, two months. So that's not considered to be that long. It's right. very short. Right. Very short. Right. But definitely after oral sex, it it it's there. The soreness is there. I don't know about the white discharge. I really don't know if I have it all the time. I you know what, Becky? There's a lot of things it could be. You need to go get a pelvic exam to see if there's some infection. I, w- I would think infection of some type, probably just purely vaginal infection, is the most likely explanation. Okay. Okay? Get yourself checked, Becky. We'll be back after this. <laughs> I was just informed by the lovely and nubile producer, Anne, that the LAPD requested the tapes of uh, Heidi Fleiss's show. I bet they'll be very impressed by that tirade you went on that I, night. Yes. Can I... Can you I, rescind that? Can I work? I'd like to, I'd like to doctor those up just uh-huh. a hair, and before the guys with the guns get a hold of it. Maybe just do, like, put a little Nixon number on a few of those. Ah, uh, it's already gone. <sighs> Jesus Christ. I'm screwed. Sorry. Yeah, I, basically. I, I, for those of you who weren't listening to that show, I basically uh, f- went off. I went so far off the freaking handle that night. And it, it, seemed like, it seemed like a minute and a half, but I'm sure it was about eight or ten minutes where I was yelling at the vice squad and the ineptitude I think and the corruption. Daryl Gates by name, did you not? I may have used Daryl Gates' name. I may have used some of the officers that were uh, pursuing Heidi Fleiss' name. I may have called them like latent homos and they're, made fun of their parents. And oh my God. They did ask me for the correct spelling of your last name. Mm, you got to be kidding, sweetheart. <laughs> That's it. All right. This That's is a it. weird show. I got a hit put on me. Not a hit. I'm telling you, something's going to happen. They don't have to do that. Uh, All I'm saying is enjoy me while you can. (laughs) I'd hate for tonight to be my last show. Rob. Yeah. You're on Loveline. Okay, no problem here. Me and my girlfriend have a wonderful relationship. We've been together for about six months. And our thing is that each time we have sex together, we always finish together. Always have the orgasms within about five seconds. Wow. I mean, today, she's right next to me, too, listening, but... uh, Today we were just, I was sucking your breasts, and we were masturbating together, just ourselves, and we even finished together. Simpatico, brother. And She is acting like Meryl Streep, by the way, Rob. I don't believe this for a second. She is, okay, she is here next to me, and I can put her on. Because, put her on. Okay, here she is. Hi. Yes, girlfriend Hi. of Rob. Um, yeah. Yes, I heard you were nominated this year. <laughs> what is your name? Um, Stephanie. Stephanie, where are you from? Uh, from Belgium. Oh, Belgium, yes. Yes, the, uh, Cla- Claude Van Damme, John Claude Van Damme's there. Another yeah, fine, well, like Van Damme. Yeah, of course. actually, after seeing him act, I, I, I do tend to believe you now. Stephanie. Yeah. How do you, how do you do this? Is this this way in Belgium for everyone? Uh, no, no, for sure it is not because, uh, uh okay. I had a boyfriend before, and it never happened, and this is kind of, uh, okay, we are really calling you because we, we can, it's like difficult to, to understand, and I don't know, <laughs> we really want to know if it is that possible, or it is, I don't know, we are very in love to each other, or, or how it's like, uh, how it is possible, really. All right, Stephanie. So, yeah. Let me tell you this, sweetness. First off, I know what he's responding to. He loves that sassy little Belgianese voice you're sporting. Give me a few Bel- give me a few sex terms in that voice real fast. It's like a harder or faster or you dog. Throw out a few of those. En uh, français? No, oui. no. Do, oui? All right, uh, do it in French. In French? Yes. Oh, ça me fait, uh, ça me fait uh, plaisir. Ça c'est super. Uh, j'adore beaucoup tout ça. 
All right, say in French, I need more of you and me, you mangy mutt. <laughs> Wait, I didn't understand. I need more of your manliness in me, you dog. You need more of my what? <laughs> Just say it in French. Que, uh, que tu, tu avais soin de quoi de moi? Yes, oui, oui. <laughs> now, Stephanie. Oui, c est, c est, yes, I am uh, listening. Let me ask you something. Oh, uh, yeah, of course. You guys are able to orgasm simultaneously. We? Oui? Oh, uh, yeah, of you? course. You? Yes. Do you communicate? Do you talk? Do you? Is there a countdown? Does he say, I'm getting close, and you go, hold on, wait up, I'm, I'm coming? <laughs> <laughs> How does that work? Um, okay, um... Uh, I think he's like uh, okay. I can realize when he's coming, and you, I think he can realize when I'm coming. But I don't know. It's like it, it is. We are like not that close. Uh, it's like we we do something and we just came together. Mm. Uh, I don't know. Could be like maybe he's uh, mowing. How do you say? <laughs> okay, he's moaning excites me too much. Mm -hmm. And maybe when he's coming, and but it is. So unusual because even it is true and sometimes we might celebrate together. It's we came, we came together, but within okay, not together at that moment. It's like within five seconds. Mm -hmm. It's like a kind of unusual. So it's uh, I don't know. We, we are really impressed about that. <laughs> we always make jokes about that because it's, it's like okay, we're gonna have it. All right, Stephanie. Yes. Put your evil boyfriend Rob back on the phone. Okay, nice to talk to you. We oui. say la vie, <laughs> au revoir. All right, I'm Rob. Ready. Yes, Rob. I want you to chain her to the bed and never unlock it. I know. I I realize that I'm a very lucky. You're man. very, very. It, no, it's not, not. Give yourself some credit. It's got nothing to do with luck, Rob. But what we want to know is there like some kind of internal timing thing that works together? Or, uh, we have no idea how to figure this out. I, no, all I can I, I I think you guys are like on uh, Eastern orgasm time. That's that's <laughs> the only internal time you guys got going on. And let me tell you something. Yeah. You do not look a gift Belgium chick in the mouth. Do you understand? Yeah. When you guys are having simultaneous orgasms, you don't make phone calls trying to figure out what the deal is. It is a wave. You must ride it, Rob. No, Enjoy we're, yourself. We're riding it all the way to the beach. Enjoy. Okay. Thank you. That's more like it. That was the type of... Yes. That was the type of international call we welcome here on Love Line. Matt! Matt? I've, I've heard a lot of stuff lately, and people are saying that you're either homosexual or heterosexual. What are you guys' opinion on that? You mean, you mean there's no bisexuality? Yeah, like Dr. Ruth. I saw a segment on her this evening, and she mm. said it doesn't exist. All right. She knows nothing. I know the answer to this. Right <laughs> I've talked about this before, but it's been a while, so I'll explain it. People who are bisexual are heading toward homosexuality. There's a, at least some of them might be, and right. I'm not fully able to accept that. Yes, they are currently half... But how about women? Women can, can experiment with the same sex. And that is be... different. I'm talking about men right now. They're currently half-mo, and they're heading for homo. That's... That's the way I would describe it. But that, that's, some of the gay community looks at it that way, too, and that's why there's sort of a disdain for bisexuality, as though they somehow have, have difficulty. Yeah, some, bi some bisexuality is actually people that have difficulty accepting their homosexuality, and so they kind of sit on the fence. But I, I, you know, if, if you look at cultures throughout the world, bisexuality exists in almost every culture. Well, it's all those hot places. All the places that are near the no, equator. No, no, no. I mean even like primitive cultures. You <laughs> oh, know, in the, they don't the have that stuff in Greenland and stuff like no, yes, that. Yes, they do. Yes, Wherever they do. Wherever they get a people, it, let me tell you how the equator works. Anything near the equator, any of these countries, these like, uh, you know, Latin American play, like Brazil and all that kind of stuff, it gets hot. People start walking around in shorts, then they, they start drinking out in the sun, and their brain gets fried, and everyone looks good over there, and they don't care who they grab. That's where you find that kind of stuff. Now, you go to Antarctica... You go over to uh, parts of the Soviet Union. You go. There's no time for this, for this bisexuality over there. Do you understand? Because you got to take the park off. They're wearing like some seal skin. You barely have time for sex w with with heterosexual sex, m much less experimenting with one of your own own race or your own gender. Okay. Now, do you guys think it's becoming more popular, like a fad? Uh, I yes. think it has been more. 
sort of endorsed it's, it's okay. in our culture. Yeah, I think it certainly is portrayed more often by the media. I think young people are sort of embracing it more as, as, a, as a trend. Especially uh, young women. Unfortunately, I, I'll tell you, it bothers me in that people who are confused about their sexual identity, who really do have a problem and probably are homosexual but are, you know can't have trouble admitting it or, uh, or whatever, they're confused, they're not clear on it, tend to act out on these bisexual impulses uh, based on the images they're seeing in the culture and end up more confused and more screwed up. It's not a cool thing for a nineteen for a fifteen year old that thinks they're bisexual, thinks they don't, doesn't know what's going on. They should hang out till they get some more clarity and they're thinking about what it is they are, who they are, and then go on about their business. Well, and and yeah, the ironic thing is, is they're confused, so they involve a penis and a vagina, right? Into which to me would just make me more confused, right? And that's why I stick to myself, Matt. Yeah, you with me? Yeah, I'm with you. God bless you, man. <laughs> Brian. Yeah. You're on Love Line. What's up? I uh, got a problem here. Go. Uh, me and my uh, ex-girlfriend, uh, we had this, we had a three-year relationship, and we were together, uh, and then we broke up, and now I was with other girls, and we were, I was still seeing that ex-girlfriend, and I just can't seem to, uh, you know, get all the way with the other girls. I can get a boner, but I just can't come. Right. Because you were sort of, but you can with the ex. Yes, with the ex I can. Because you were kind of used to something. I don't know what it is. These other girls, I feel they're better. But you feel more comfortable with your ex. I don't know if that's it. And, and, and I'm, listen, Brian, don't every, be combative. Something's going on. I got to be right on one of these things. Everything doesn't always boil down to mechanics and comfort, though. I mean, no, I'm kind of talking about an emotional comfort right. as well. Yes, I or believe connected. it's the only girl that I've ever really loved. Yeah. And you know that you, you see, here's how this stuff works psychologically in, in anything. And I'm not just talking about sex. Mm -hmm. The definition of confidence is knowing you can do something before you've done it. And your problem is that of confidence. Meaning when you're with these new girls. Wait a minute. You're with these new girls. You don't, you've never had an orgasm with these new girls, and you don't know if you can. When you see your old girlfriend, you go, ah, done it a thousand times, and you don't think twice about it. You're relaxed and able to achieve orgasm. Yes, Drew? Adam, you're a funny guy. You go right past the love thing. Mm -hmm. He is in love with his ex-girlfriend. Well, he still loves huh? her. It's connected with her. Why are you banging all these new girls then? Well, I don't know. I... Just because I feel I have to, maybe I'm just not over here yet and can't accept it. Well, also, my friends, they call me a rubberneck. I drink a lot. I'm silly like that. All right. Let me explain what the number two problem is. I'm moving on to a second hypothesis of, of, of one call, by the way. Here's what the problem is. You are in love with this girl. When you're with the other girls, you feel a certain amount of guilt because you're thinking about this other girl. And orgasm is a way... Main uh, refraining from orgasm is a way of not sort of finalizing the sexual act. Meaning, it's like it wasn't cheating because you didn't have an orgasm. Hmm. Yeah, that's something. That is something. You're, you're reaching. I'm going with that one though. Is it possible so that the, the, possible, that the so sex what act? Do, what do I do with this girl? Then do I try to go back? From yes. Home? Yes. Go back you to your do. girlfriend. You got to get right back to where you started from. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yes, that's going to kickstart me. Mike. Mike pointed his finger at me like we were at an auction, and uh, I think that's going to revive the show. I am Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. He's a board-certified physician. The phone number here at Loveline, 1-800-LOVE-191. The fax number, 310-854-4455. Faxes? Faxes like the one I have in my hand, Drew. Uh, labeled uh, Important Penis Inquiry. Well, I have to look into this. The other night, you guys were talking about cracking your penis. Yeah, Drew mentioned he did that in no, college. No, no. actually, I mentioned that I do it on occasion. And it's been a long time, I must say. But, but, it, I, but I, I certainly have done it in the past. It was your special talent. Yes, that's right. That's why I won um, Miss North Hollywood competition with. Uh, I want to let you know that you're not alone because my husband can do the same thing. We've always just called it uh, popping his penis. Because it sounds a lot like you're popping your knuckles. And that's why I call it cracking, because it sounds like you're cracking your knuckles. Do you know what causes this gift? And I guess it is a gift. Sort of like when you call retarded kids special. 
I think that's the way gift is being used there. And I mean no offense to any retarded or special kids, but I'm not sure how they meant gift. Uh, because everyone knows there is no bone located in the penis. Thank you. But there is a ligament. There is a ligament. Yeah. And you can't crack that. Yeah. And, but it's not the same as when you crack your knuckles? Not the same? Mm, different, probably. Yeah. And mine's uh, bigger. Than your finger. J- just a bit, though. Tina? Hi. You're on Loveline. Hi, I'm not Belgian or anything, but uh, mm. I uh, <laughs> have a little bit of a counterpoint to some of the other masturbation calls you've been getting tonight. Go ahead. Um, my boyfriend does not masturbate. Mm-hmm. He does not like to, and it makes him feel weird, and um, I was wondering if this was unusual. You bought this entire rap, have you? No, this is true. You're sure? I'm positive. We've discussed this and everything. Mm-hmm. And you want to know what? Um, I wanted to know if that is it's somehow harmful, if that's bad, and also if it can, like, increase his sex drive. I certainly, I, well... Not that, necessarily. That's a, the, yeah, that's there's two sides to that to that topic because on one hand, if you're masturbating constantly and and th- there's there's never a bullet in the chamber, so to speak, it does reduce your sex drive. I right. mean, if I don't masturbate for a week or so, I am dangerous. I mean, I'm sitting at home going. I never really noticed that male chick before. Look at her. She's got a certain way about her. Sure, she's in her 50s. Sure, she's got she's got calves like a Samoan, but she's the way she slings that bag over her shoulder. There's something there. And you will start calling people, girls in my case, that I have. I swear to God it will do this. If Mike, Mike the engineer, you must back me up on this. If you don't masturbate, if you broke both hands in some sort of bizarre skiing accident, you didn't. I'd find a way. You didn't. <laughs> you'd use your feet. <laughs> I'd you didn't, find a way. You didn't masturbate for a couple of weeks. All of a sudden, you go, "Hey, whatever happened to that Stephanie I went to high school with? Wonder what she's up to." You're not even thinking of sex necessarily. You just start making phone calls and things. You start noticing things. It it, it's, it does screw with your mind. On the other hand. If you go all the time, like I said before, you, you, you may have nothing in you. So there's a balance. But also if, if, you're, if you're less active, your testosterone levels can start to fall off and you can have less need. Right. Because God is not a cruel Right. Not God. that cruel anyway. Not that cruel. Well, he does have, I mean, he has a pretty high sex drive. And um, I feel quite a bit of pressure on my part because I feel like he's not taking care of himself at all and it's all up to me. Hmm. Wow, that's weird. So you're, you are you wish he would service himself a little more often. Yeah, because he gets cranky. <laughs> he does? Yes. He, I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe that's not what's making him cranky. So you, you, uh, you, you essentially have become his hand. I suppose so. Well, no, no. Adam. Yes, yes, it's true. No, your your, your no. little pure little orifices have become his hand. Look, he essentially, has a, no, yes, no. He has a higher drive than she does, and she is not wanting to have to worry about his needs but all the time. But hers are different. She has to worry about his needs because he does not take care right. of his own That's needs. Right. That is why her. Openings have become his no, hand. That's not, but that's just but a it's horrible true. way to think well, of it or say it. Life is not pretty, but it's true. That's what mm. this guy's doing. No, 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 no. He has no problem. I mean, he he's very respectful of my needs, and I think this is kind of that to the extreme where his he feels bad about doing it himself. He'd rather share it with me. Right. It, that wait, is that. wait a minute, Tina. You just said ten seconds ago that that he was pushing on you a little because he wasn't masturbating. Well, I mean, he has a higher sex drive than I do. Right, and he's yeah. nagging you because he's not servicing himself. But uh, because he wants that experience, he doesn't want the... Well, now that he's he's Mr. Sensitive and he wants to include her on his... on He doesn't wants to share his seed with her and doesn't want to waste it on a gym sock. Tina, which is the story? One or the other? I think Dr. Drew knows what I'm, what I'm talking about here. He... I think... Now you've confused me, Adam. <laughs> I'm confused, too. By the way, Adam, I want you to know that I enjoy you much more than um, Ricky Rackman. <laughs> oh, thank you. You're much more entertaining. Thank um, you, although we love him. Well, I was wondering, um, could this, I mean, because he doesn't take care of himself, I mean, could that be, I mean, would he be maybe less pushy on me if maybe he didn't? That's yes, right, maybe. he would. And, 
he would. Now, she, she, yes, Drew, she answered it. No, no, would she, he be less pushy on me? She was real quick to defend him, and that's noble and everything, and quick to defend you because somehow when it comes from my mouth, it's just like a, a like old old folks sitting on some porch spinning yarns. There's not a lick of truth in it, but the reality was is he is pushing on her sexually in her opinion because he is not taking but, but, care of but, his own but, needs but, but honestly yes that's true but you're, you're suggesting that his what he's pushing on her is some kind of mechanical impersonal dispassionate you know thing it's not he wants to do something that he that he enjoys more but she doesn't want right, to do it but she doesn't want to do it and, and, and then it be becomes to, a mechanical right. thing no, for her for her yes well who are we talking to drew you are moated and corroded on this one you just won't admit it but I'm going to let you Moated take... Moated and corroded. <laughs> That's what, what I used to say that? in the schoolyard when someone was busted. Ah, chalk one up for the ad man. Ah, John? Hello? You're on Loveline. Hey, Adam. Yes. Top Fuel Adam. Yes. I got a surprise for you. <laughs> what? I'm going to bring my little uh, blown streetcar down this summer and let you do some burnouts. Do you have those? Yeah, I'm building one right now. Do you know guys like little John Lombardo, the shy town hustler, TV Tommy Idol? Yeah. Big Daddy's taking that trophy this way, but Shirley Cha Chama Downey says, No way, that's mine. Amphetamine Speedway. <laughs> With a 210, the 110, the Harbor, and the Exposition Freeway. Collide! Yes, John. Uh, my question is for Dr. Drew. Yeah, John. Uh, on uh, addiction uh, to, uh, say, Diet Coke, mm. um, 44 ounces, 64 ounces. Uh, a couple times a day, mm -hmm. uh, caffeine, mm -hmm. the long-term effect on that, on your body, as far as uh, the internal organs. You're using the, the diet or the... Uh, diet. Diet soft drinks. Because uh, the, the sugar stuff, obviously bad for your teeth, bad for your weight. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, I'm not aware of any. I mean, people worry that these these artificial sweeteners are going to have problems, but I'm not. I don't see where they've proven that yet. Well, l let me let me say this, Drew. Unless you're, uh, I'm not going to go ahead. I, I've seen people get strange bone metabolism problems from actually the chelated aluminum from the aluminum cans. People are drinking like a case of you know the, the, the aluminum cans. What about of Alzheimer's? Today. No. No? No. There's no correlation between that and uh, Look, aluminum? Uh, for instance, people on dialysis, their aluminum levels are hundreds of times higher than normal. Okay. They don't get dementia. So it's a genetic thing now, the it is. It just so happens that as a result of the particular kind of gen degeneration that occurs in the brain, there is some aluminum held there. Mm -hmm. But it probably doesn't have anything to do with aluminum itself. The other thing I was uh, thinking of was my brother's a diabetic. Yeah. And I was thinking of being tested as far as... Yeah, but that would you should be tested, but that would have nothing to do with his uh, with your soft drink habit. Well, okay. Cause I've tried to quit before, but it's just like, you know, you just feel so run down. John, let me say a few things here. Although I'm not a doctor, I still believe I have valid opinions that that it's okay to share with the listeners once part of in your a while, even syndrome. regarding. <laughs> Ouch. Did you hear that, John? Even when it comes to medical questions. Here's what I know. Uh, caffeine, A, if you, you will have withdrawals and get headaches and things like that, like other things you can be addicted to. Obviously not as bad as something like heroin, but there is a withdrawal with there's, weaning yourself. There's a dependency. There's really not an addiction to caffeine. So mm -hmm. go ahead. You can get dependent on it. You can, you can need it and withdraw from it. You don't like it when someone takes it away, right. and it's a matter of degrees. Heroin, you don't like it a huge amount when someone takes it away, and you don't like it a more of a medium amount with caffeine, but there are withdrawals yes. with that. Number two, they try to figure out something wrong with caffeine every other year yes, or, right. every, or ten times a year. Fifth, they sit yeah, down, they do studies, and they try to figure right. it out, and they never really right. come up with anything. It's a lot like alcohol in small doses, a couple glasses of wine every night. Now, I'm talking about or maybe yeah. one glass of wine for a woman and two for a man. I'm not talking about pregnant women, but right. they look and they try to figure out, is this good? Is it bad? What's it doing to yeah. us? And they never can figure it out, so yeah. they just always say, in moderation, it's not gonna. It's not gonna kill you. Right. Booze, no. caffeine, same thing. Little right. bit. And as a matter of fact, uh, if you take caffeine, for instance, they've they've done tests with athletes, and mm -hmm. and a shot of um, coffee before they go out and train actually enhances right. their ability Absolutely. to train. Increases muscle tone, blood supply of the muscles. Number two, uh, there is more caffeine in a cup of coffee than in like an expre espresso shot. By the way, too, which a lot of people don't know. Really? Yes, I love because the smell of coffee. Because why? Well, because you're only taking two ounces, right? right. And you're taking you know eight or ten right. ounces, twelve ounces of the coffee. But uh, 
So the point is, is try to try to cut back. Okay. Can you do that? Uh, yeah. Oh, one other thing, uh, Doctor Drew. Yeah, um, John. Um, uh, herpes simplex. Mm -hmm. uh, Two thousand milligrams a day of lysine. No. There's no. so much more effective stuff than that. I mean, well, there's I mean, that, that helps me as far as the outbreaks. All right. Severe. Well, good. I mean, it's certainly been discussed as and useful. And that stuff for, is so cheap, for a and long you don't time. need a prescription. Well, no, I get, get uh, Zivirac. Yeah, Zovirac. Zovirac. Now there are two other alternatives I to know, that. You said something else. Famvir and Valtrex. Famvir. Famvir. Famvir is actually a short, much shorter, lower dose therapy. Is that the name of the guy who plays the flute and sells his ra records on I think TV? Is the name night? of the guy that's in that movie with now? Available on TV only. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and that's a prescription? Yes. Yes, 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 John. Okay. Are there any more of our life we can dedicate toward your life? That, that's it. You guys do a great service, and you guys are funnier than heck. I listen to you every night. Thank you, and mahalo. Hey, we are back with the uh, last leg of Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. He's a board-certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. We want to thank the uh, folks from Party of Five, Nev Campbell and Michael Gorgian. Good. Yes, for yeah. coming in tonight. They were... With they, their energy. With their energy. They were, they were breaths of fresh air. Make sure and go see them at Universal Studios this Saturday between noon and four up on the Lido deck. Or somewhere. Drew and I were talking during the uh, break about taking calls, but we decided to just talk about weird energy. Now, tonight, there was a strange, strange, weird energy to this show. Not saying it was a horrible show, although it wouldn't rank up there with one of our best, but it was a weird energy, and we agreed on it. You know what? The, the kind of the content of the calls was kind of awful a bit, too. You notice that? It wasn't, there was nothing real clarity and no real... Well, the know, Belgian something. chick was pretty good. You like that, of course. Yeah, but that's true, and... and our weird energy somehow was pushed out to our to our, our listeners because they came in and their rhythm and their timing was a little off. And yeah. you notice how it seemed like three out of four calls started with a sputter and a stutter and a huh? Uh, uh, am, am I on it? And usually we have great calls. Yeah. And usually everyone listening comes in and they're just firing and they're ready to go. So and basically it's, it's we, we figured out the problem. It was the screener's fault. Is that it? <laughs> we have to blame somebody. It certainly couldn't be us. No, I will take credit for tonight because uh, as uh, as the, you are a doctor, well, I've been in a strange mood myself. Well, you say. came in a little funked yeah. out, but I I did too, and uh, and and I ultimately will will take the blame for the show going any any strange directions and uh, unfunny directions as well. Now tomorrow, Valentine's Day. Yes. I'm bringing my wife up. Yes, you certainly are. I am going We're to leaving have the a, kids at home. I am going to have a field day with her, Drew. Are you really? Now, don't worry. I'm not going to get too prying, but there are certain things I'm going to need to know. Like and, what? Just a preview. I'm not going to get anything. I don't want to give it away, but I'm not going to get anything too personal, and I'm not going to get anything too prodding or too prying, but I'm, I, will, I do want to know what you're like around the house. And why, why do I believe that you're saying that necessarily means you're going to be I, extremely invasive I want to hear about all the little bizarre rituals you have, you walking around in your underwear, whether boxer or brief. There's going to be certain Dr. Drew, the family man. All right. We are going to explore that. I am going to see if I can rustle up a date. If not, I will just play the role of the horny and inquisitive host. Until then, I would like to thank the lovely Sherry. I would like to thank the lovely Lori. I would thank the lovely Scott back at the uh, control tower. I would like to thank the handsome and voluptuous Mike on the boards. I would like to thank the intelligent, inquisitive, and attractive young Dr. Drew. And I'm not going to thank myself tonight because I don't deserve it. We'll be back tomorrow night. Join us then. So that's it then. Opinions expressed on Loveline by Adam Carolla, Dr. Drew, or anyone are not necessarily ours. Be happy. Be happy. Happy, happy, happy. happy. Loveline's producer is Ann Wilkins. Thank you.